In this problem, we have an equation of a polynomial function. It's uh, given to us in factored form, so finding the zeros won't be too difficult. What we're being asked to do here is to determine its end behavior, so where the, the branches of the function go off to the left and right, whether they go up or down. And then to find the zeros of the function and their multiplicity, and then the y-intercept, and sketch a graph of that. You know, when you don't have a graphing calculator to graph a function like this, it's pretty tough to get every point precise. However, we can make a pretty good approximation if we know this information. If we know the end behavior, where it crosses or touches the x-axis, where it touches the y-axis. Um, if we have those things, we can, can make a pretty good graph. And that's what we're going to do here. So let's talk about, about end behavior first. Just to review, the end behavior of a function depends on its highest power and whether that's odd or even. So with functions who have an odd highest power, um, the, the end behavior, one's going to go up and one's going to go down. It's going to be down on the left and up on the right if the leading coefficient, so that highest power of x, if the coefficient of that is positive. You're going to have down on the left, up on the right. The opposite if it's negative, up on the left, down on the right. If you've got an even power of that um, uh, highest power of x, if the, po the coefficient is positive, both are going to be pointing up. If it's negative, both are going to be pointing down. So that's end behavior. Let's look at what we have in our function. Uh, because this is factored, it might be a little tricky to figure out what's the highest power of x here. But inside this set of parentheses, we have an x, and that gets squared. So this is really x squared inside here. And then we multiply that by x. x squared times x is x to the third. Our highest power here is going to be x to the third. So this is odd, an odd power for our highest power. And then we have this negative sign out front. That's going to make our leading coefficient negative. So what that means is we have this situation here. It's going to be up on the left, down on the right. And I'm just going to, just to, to keep track here, I'm just going to sketch that in, up on the left and down on the right. And let's see if we can figure out what happens in between there. So we want to find the zeros of this function. That's not too hard. We've got the factors here. We've got x plus 1 squared. So there's two of those. We'll talk about multiplicity in a second. But really, what I want to do is just set that x plus 1 equal to 0. And then we've got x minus 2. And we'll set that equal to 0. And then we'll just solve for x. In this case, we get x equals negative 1 and a positive 2. So those are zeros of the function. And I can actually plot these right now. So negative 1 is here and positive 2 is here. Now, when we have a 0 of a function, one of two things can happen. The, fu the, the function can go right through it, or it can just touch it and go back the other way. How do we know? Well, we use these rules right here. Zeros that have an odd multiplicity cross the axis. If they have an even multiplicity, they touch the axis. This one, x minus 2, there's just one of those, so that's it's it's only one time. That's an odd multiplicity. This one, there's two times, so there's multiple. Uh, there's two of them. Two is even, so that has an even multiplicity. So this one is just going to touch the axis. And since it was up here, it must be like this. So going up on both sides of that. This one's going to cross the axis. And since it's going down here, it must go down like that. All right, so those are the zeros and their multiplicity. Let's find the y-intercept. This is easy. We just put in 0 for x to find the y-intercept. If I put in 0 for x, I get a negative 0 plus 1 squared times 0 minus 2. So this is a negative 1 squared, which is just 1, times a negative 2. All of that comes out to a positive 2. So it crosses the y-axis at positive 2. Now you can really see something taking shape. So we'll just sort of fill in the gaps here. And there we go. A little, uh, a little goofy looking, but that's basically got the behavior of the function down here. So that is how to use the end behavior the zeros and their multiplicity, and the y-intercept to sketch a reasonably accurate graph of a function.